Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now this is going to be basically a quick flip around the workshop um, just to show you a few interesting things that have come in which I will do more detailed reviews on I suppose and, and talks about. Um, but I just thought there's so many things in at the moment to just sort of give you a bit of a preview of what's going on. Um, I've literally just finished editing uh, a, a video that I recorded about an hour and a half ago and so whew, straight into another one which is very unlike me. I don't often get a chance to do this but uh, basically I'm over there uploading at the moment or it would be if the, inter the internet's gone. Yeah, my internet keeps dropping out, which yeah, that's so it may, may be longer than I'm expecting it to be. Uh, I'll look at that in a minute. Um, yeah, but workshop-wise, um, it's partly what's going on here at the moment is because it had gone very quiet. I'd started. To, I've, I've promised this for ages. I've got loads of second-hand Regas. I've got ones, twos, threes, um, very early threes, more recent three. Actually, I'll just show you. They're sort of dotted around the place. Uh, there's a very controversial two on the jig at the moment, which I will talk about in detail at the moment. Um, and a P1 over there, which I traded it in. The guy didn't tell me it had a faulty arm, but it's got a faulty arm. So the arm's going back to Riga. Um, quite how he's managed to do it, I don't know, but it's, it'll be sorted. Um, there's a fairly recent P3 down there and a P1. Uh, there's P, early P3s about the place, a lot more P1s. And RP1, I've got RP1 as well. So there's, there's lots of them around the place. Also in here, which you may have noticed, is this, which isn't a Riga and isn't, like a customer said this morning, a John Michel Gyrodeck. It's there is a there is a bit of a family sort of tie up with John Michel, but it was a briefish one. This is a transcriptor reference, and I've never seen a black one, if I'm honest. Um, and I also don't think it's that old. I mean, transcriptor dates back a long way. I mean, they, their claim to fame is that there was a, a transcriptor reference in the film Clockwork Orange with, was it, uh, Malcolm McDowell, wasn't it? And who was the other person who was in it? It was unexpectedly in it. Um, Warren Clark was in it, who was Delzell and Pascoe. He was in it as well, wasn't he? Um, I was just think, trying to think when it would have been. I would guess, because it was sort of an, it was a bit groundbreaking. It was probably 71. A lot of, a lot of really good music and really good stuff films-wise was 1971. So I'm, it's, I would have thought it's certainly no earlier than 70. Um, so, yeah, we're dating back to 1970, possibly earlier than that, with, with Transcriptor. Not long after, I think it may have been around or possibly a little bit later, uh, John Michel, sort of pre-Michel engineering, um, or probably the, the beginnings of Michel Engineering probably, got a license to produce these, to actually make them for, for, for Transcriptor. So he was producing them. So basically he was a manufacturer, but Transcriptor was the, was the owner. Um, and then I think after, after a while he decided to do his own turntables, and there was a bit of a, I don't know that there was a court case, but there was a bit of a row anyway. So because the, obviously the John Michels do look, there is a, a similarity in the looks really. Um, what happened to Transcriptor after that, I'm not sure, because I need to do a bit of research on it. I think they sort of disappeared and came back, and I, at one point I used to use Twitter, and they were fairly active on Twitter. There was a, the guy on there who was produ apparently producing parts for them, then he'd say, oh, I'm, I'm finishing now, I'm not going to do it anymore, and then a few months later he was back on there selling parts again. So I don't know quite what the background story is. If anybody does know the background story of, of Transcript, if you email me, actually, be quite interested, because I've not been able to find much much about them, really. Over the, I've, I've tried a few times to find more information and I've not really got anywhere with it. But nice nice turntable, and nicely made. Um, I'll do a proper I'll do a proper walk around on this later on, but I'm fitting a different tone arm. It's got an RB300, a straightforward RB300 on it, although it has got a John Michel uh, VTA adjuster on it, which it kind of needs, I suppose. Uh, fitting a um, Michelle only off a Michelle techno arm to it, which should be interesting actually. That's a, it's one of the few Riga based modifica, mod, modified arms. It is actually pretty good actually. Uh, it's one of the yeah, and is reliable because an awful lot of Riga based arms aren't reliable because they, I don't know, don't know why that is. Talking about Riga for mod, mod, modifications, um, you've noticed I wasn't too happy about this P2. Now, what I tend to, if if a deck comes in traded in and it's got mods to it, I, I get rid of them all, take them all off. I don't really like Riga mods. I think, you know, you should, I don't know. It's one of those, it's a bit like cars, isn't it? If somebody's, you know, like an old Mini or an Escort or something, you, you don't really want to modify. You want it to be uh, as, as standard spec as possible, really. Now, this had um, a metal hub on it, which I'm obviously taking off. 
the problem with these things is, I and mean, I've said it before on this channel, and I know it probably does upset people because there's a big, there's a big sort of um, following for stuff like this. All the ones I've seen have been really poor. That doesn't mean to say that they're all really poor. It just means to say all the ones I've seen have been really poor. There's various types of these things uh, available. Um, most, well, I can say most of them, all the ones I've had in my hands here have all been very, very new, six months or so, sort of in age, up to about a year, and they're always so so worn out that they're pretty, pretty well scrap. Now, this, this one, funnily enough, is actually better made. It does seem to be a little bit, there's a little bit more thought gone into it. It's actually got a little, um, there's a different material actually sort of impacted into the bottom there. It's actually machined in and, and pressed in. So there's a bit more work gone into this. It's not just a, like a, a steel, a steel, a sort of unhardened steel stub on there that just wears, wears, wears away straight away. So I sort of saw it and I thought, well, actually, it's probably okay. But then notice that there is actually, even though there's a different material in there, there is, you won't be able to see that on camera. Um, actually, I can't see it because the screen's gone off. There's a little indent in the bottom of it from the from the ball bearing. Now that does happen, but on a re, on the on original Riga, I've got one over here somewhere. You, you won't be able to see it. I'm not going to take it apart actually. But this one came in on a deck, uh, and the reason I swapped it was that the guy had used or somebody had used the wrong oil at some point and way too much of it, and it had actually got into the phenolic resin of the of the hub. And started to attack it, so I thought the easiest thing to do because it was making ticking noises and all sorts. So, so it's the best thing to do is just swap it. This has got less wear on it than the I would guess a year old hub we've got down there. This is from a 1982, yeah, 1982 Riga. This was off, so it's 41 years old. So it kind of gives you this, you know, yeah, I know it's. The, Riga, the actual Riga bearing is really good. I know people don't like. The fact it's phenolic resin, they think, oh, it's a plastic part, it's cheap to produce, then it's, it's them cutting corners. The reason it's phenolic resin, I've gone over and over and over this, is that it acts as a barrier between the resonant plinth and the platter, because you don't want things that are being picked up by the plinth being transmitted up to the platter. So it acts as a barrier, it's like a um, sound absorb absorption. You don't have it on the 6 and the 8 and the 10 because they're ultra lightweight and it's, there's not as anything like the transition of vibration. So if you put a metal hub in there, you're almost grounding it. You, you, you're allowing a, a clear path of resonance for the resonance to go up through the metal hub. The benefit of these, and there is a benefit, um, is that it, it will be a, a more accurately machined circumference. So the, the belt will be tracking more accurately. So there is a benefit, but this transmission of noise is a bad thing. The fact that they wear out so fast, I mean, probably, like I said, there's some higher end versions of things like this that people are making, which are much more robust. But like I said, this one's got a good 40 years wear on it in a year. Um, and it, it, it's a lot better. <laughs> Some of the ones I've seen of these, literally the, the ball bearings has been pushed right into the, the base of them in, in six months. And it's, there's a good two or three millimetres of, uh, of impacted hole in there from the ball bearing. It's dreadful, really. But just to demonstrate um, tolerances, when you put a Riga subplatter into the bearing, one of the one of the problems of for me time wise when I'm servicing a Riga is I can usually I could probably do a complete service in about twenty minutes, but generally I have to add twenty minutes because you put the put the hub in, and because it's such close tolerance it airlocks, and you have to wait for the thing to drop. In fact, usually what I'll do is put the platter on, spin the platter, uh, and, and eventually it'll drop down. When they when they're quite warm, they go down quicker and quicker and quicker as they're warm. Um, but generally there is quite a bit of resistance and you do have to wait for them. This is a fairly new part, supposedly high quality. Let go of it. Yeah, there's basically no air resistance whatsoever. The air just gushes out because it's not close enough tolerance. And what's quite scary about this one is if you get... I'm just going to get my microphone close into it. Um, if I just rock it from side to side, which you shouldn't be able to rock it from side to side. I don't know if you can hear that. The, the, whole, the spindle is actually moving around in the in the in the bearing. I mean there's no way. I mean it spins nicely but it's basically it's not rigid at all. It's just not rigid. So yeah, I basically hate these things. I just don't I don't, I don't understand it. But anyway, I'll, I'll just walk away. Walk away from the yeah. Um what else is going on? I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. 
What else is going on? Um, oh, actually, I'll just show you these. Oh, I'm done passing. If you want to look, what, if you want to know what the box for an eleven thousand pound worth of speaker cable looks like, that's it. Um, I seem to have sold a lot of high-end speaker cable recently. Had a little little run on it. Um, I've been lent a pair of um, here we go, there and there, neat mystiques, which are really interesting. Actually, I know I, I probably over, overdo the neat. Um, reviews, but there's such a good range at the moment. Everything they're bringing out at the moment is wonderful. The Mystique kind of comes between um, the Petite, which is over there, uh, Elite, which I haven't got at the moment, which I need to get some, some in. Um, so yeah, you go Petite, Mystique, and then, then the Elite. So the Elite's a bigger version. The Mystique is kind of a, kind of a hybrid. It's got the, that wonderful treble unit that you get in the, in the Petite and the, the Elite. But the base unit is actually the same. When I mean, you look at it, it's if you put it, if you imagine that through ninety degrees, it's the same as the one they use in the Motive. So I mean, there's quite good heritage there. So yeah, I think they're. I've been really enjoying these so far. I think they, they, they sort of fill the gap quite nicely. They're a, a fuller sounding petite. Um, they haven't obviously got the scale of elites, but they're. they're if you want a little floor stand, they're, they're a tiny little floor stand there. If that's all you've got space for, these are great. I think I think they'll do really well, and they're a good, they're a good thousand pounds less than the Elite. I'll do a proper review of these actually, because again, I've run them down here, and I've I've got a sort of a, I can usually tell, even though this room is awful. I've said it before. This this part of the shop doesn't sound good anyway. Um, I've got a fairly good idea what these are going to be like, and I'll put them in the big room on something a bit more a bit more serious and see, just see how they perform. Um, so I'll, yeah, I'll try and do that in the next couple of days because I need, need, need these back actually because they're doing a bit of a UK tour with them. So I was quite lucky for them to leave them, to be honest. Uh, I will also do, I've, sure, I've pointed these out before, I will be doing a review of the EPOS, but I must take those upstairs because actually uh, it was interesting. I had these running in the shop and I wasn't sure about them at all. Um, I suspect they're not enjoying the space down here, but put the little mystiques on and it was ridiculously better. So yeah, I'll let's get, I need to get them in the den room before I actually say too much. Really, I suspect I don't really like those. Uh, they get good reviews, but I just have a sneaky suspicion I don't like them. But anyway, um, so, sorry, Brian. Anyway, let's leave it. At that, leave it at that point, really. I'll um, like I said, I've got quite a lot of stuff to do. So yeah, reviews of the mistakes are becoming review. Well, retro review probably of the transcriptor when I've found out a bit more about it. Um, that's it, isn't it, really? That's it. I think there's, yeah, probably... Oh, you know, funnily enough, it's not come yet, but I've got quite a few interesting things coming from Synergistic as well. Plus an amplifier that I've requested a go at, which was something that I heard, or, or a model of an amplifier from this particular manufacturer that I heard 35 years ago and thought it was amazing. I've now discovered that they're actually still out there producing stuff and there's somebody importing them. So I've just asked, requested to hear something. That could be interesting. Whether it's as good as I remember, we'll see. But um, anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll, uh, oh, don't forget to give the usual, you know all that. Um, I'll see you in a future video. See you soon.